This is your reality check. What's up, cuboids, and welcome to The Reality Check, the Canadian show that explores a wide range of controversies and curiosities using science and critical thinking. I'm your host, Adam Gardner, and there's no one with me today. We weren't able to get together to do a recording, but I still wanted to put out a show, so it'll just be a short show, one segment from me today. If you're not a fan of my segments, well, I'm not really sure how you made it this far, but you can skip this one. Now, I recently saw a meme making the rounds that said, and I quote, You know what the biggest problem with pushing all things AI is? Wrong direction. I want AI to do my laundry and dishes so that I can do art and writing, not for AI to do my art and writing so that I can do laundry and dishes. Funny, haha, chuckle. Widely shared, widely liked. But is it true? Now, my first reaction was that while it would be great to get AI to do laundry and dishes for us, these are actually things that have been largely automated in our lives, even though that hasn't been done by AI. This automation has not been complete and is not equally accessible to people throughout the world. There are people in many countries that probably do laundry and dishes the old-fashioned way. And there are still manual steps to get these done. But my point is, the way we do these chores is a lot different than it might have been 100, 200, or more years ago. So, simple question for a lot of our listeners. When was the last time you used a washboard to do laundry? Personally, I have never used a washboard. I think the only time I might have touched one is like at a museum or, you know, to make to make some music on it or something like that. So let's look a bit at the history of doing laundry, what it used to be like. One simple fact is that in ancient times, um, a lot of people, they just didn't wash their clothes a lot. They were dirty. Their clothes were dirty. And that's just kind of how they lived a lot of the time. They maybe only even had one set of clothes and it didn't get washed all that often. But I want to look at how much work used to be done when laundry was actually cleaned and what that entailed. In ancient Egypt, clothes were washed in the Nile River with something called natron. It's a naturally occurring compound which was used to wash things. In ancient Rome, clothes were soaked in large basins that were filled with water and urine. After this, they were scrubbed on a washboard, beaten with wooden tools, and then rinsed to remove dirt and residue. And I assume that rinsing also helped remove that urine. So would you say that's more or less work than putting clothes in a machine with a Tide Pod and pushing some buttons? Eventually, luckily, soap replaced urine. Great. But scrubbing the garments on a washboard was still necessary. The clothes were wrung out using a large wooden wringer. And this obviously takes a little bit more effort than running the spin cycle on your laundry machine. Later, there were some early laundry machines that um, many of them were operated with a hand crank, sort of manual, and others were powered by steam pretty fancy. Then in the 20th century, electric washing machines started to to become more prominent. Early models were far from what we have today, and technology improved throughout the 20th century. 1930s gave way to automatic machines with, with cycles that automatically triggered so people would be able to put their clothes in, walk away, and have it do their laundry. There were also detergents which became available in the 1940s. They replaced soap, so this led to a lot less wear and tear on the clothes themselves as they were being cleaned. Now, there's probably a whole other segment that I'd like to do on the difference between sort of soap and detergent, body wash, shampoo, all sorts of other things, but I'll leave that for another day. Now, I know what you're thinking. Adam, it's still a pain. I still hate doing laundry, even if I have a machine. Yes, I get it. I have two young children, one of whom likes to do many wardrobe changes on any given day. I do a lot of laundry, and I enjoy the memes which suggest things like the never-ending story of adulthood being the endless pile of laundry to fold or just to wash in general. And, you know, this is this is technically true. Unless you and everyone in your household is naked when you're doing a load of laundry, there will be more laundry that is still needs to be done when your laundry seems to be done. So there, there, there is always going to be more laundry until you die, basically. Yes, laundry remains work, and some of it has not yet been automated. The washing and drying of laundry can be done very efficiently by machines, but gathering and moving the clothes, loading and unloading the machines, and the most difficult part that remains, folding the clothes and putting it away, that still remains work that we have to do. All said, personally, I probably spend about 40 minutes to an hour a week doing the actual folding of laundry, even if the machines wash the laundry while I'm free to do other things. Surely a laundry machine can free one up to engage in leisurely pursuits, 
but they also free me up to do other chores. So the big question is, why don't I have a robot that can fold my clothes? Okay, this isn't as simple a problem as, say, having an AI system generate natural language or art. Interacting in the real world with garments that are of different shapes and sizes, determining how each piece needs to be folded appropriately, that is a difficult problem. So if you want a machine that will fold a single type of clothing, sheets, towels, something like that, that's possible. It's limited in scope. These machines exist. They're expensive. They're very specialized. Having a machine that, like a human, can just fold anything, that's much more complicated. No big surprise. Didn't take long to search. Such a machine does exist. The Foldimate is a machine which sells for a bit less than $1,000, or at least it used to. It seems the website is no longer available. It can't fold especially large items like sheets or small items like underwear, but it is said to be good at doing pants, shirts, and a lot of things. But even if this machine works perfectly as shown in the demo video, it still looks to be time consuming. So you have to put the items into the machine one by one. You already sort of have to flatten them out and you have to feed them into the machine in a specific way and hook them up and do it just right. The machine then folds the items um, and then you give it another, but you're limited by the speed at which the machine is, is taking them in. This is probably a bit faster than folding by hand, but there's still time and there's still work there. Also, when the stuff is folded, you need to sort them. So either you just randomly put things in one at a time, and then you have to sort them when they come out, or you have to sort them before they go in. Okay, I'm just going to do these piles of my shirts. Okay, now I'm going to do all of this one child's shirt, now all of this other child's shirts, and now I'm going to do pants and so forth. You can understand how this can be a little complicated. And then, of course, you still have to put stuff away. Always a bit of a pain. So that's laundry. What about dishes? Evidently, we have machines to do that too. I don't know that we really need to get into the history of how we used to clean dishes and stuff like that. Um, but the, the big invention is a dishwasher. I own a dishwasher. I think it's pretty great. I lived in an apartment for about four months a few years ago. I didn't have a dishwasher at the time. And when I moved into my current place, um, I didn't have the dishwasher installed at first. So I actually went a few months without it. So you know, I understand exactly how much work it is to hand wash dishes. Throughout my life, I've often lived in places where I didn't have access to a dishwasher, and it was fine. It's it's more work, but, you know, you can do it. Washing and drying dishes by hand is time consuming. But like with doing laundry, even when you have a dishwasher, you still need to do a lot of work. I still spend a lot of my day uh, scraping stuff off of plates, rinsing dishes, loading and unloading the dishwasher, and there's some items that have to be washed and dried by hand. So that still ends up being a lot of work. But all this technology has greatly improved the task of washing dishes. And it's maybe worth mentioning that while I prepared this segment, there was a dishwasher washing my dishes and there was a laundry machine washing my laundry. I did not plan that, but these are just things that were going on while I took the time to do the segment. So as Joanna Messiajuska, the author of that viral tweet, asked, Is AI going in the wrong direction? Why can't AI do my laundry and dishes so that I can do art and writing? The simple answer here is that modern AI systems like large language models used by systems like ChatGPT or machine learning algorithms used for uh, AI image generation like Midjourney or DALI aren't able to do laundry or dishes. What we would need to facilitate the remaining challenges are either specialized machines like those we already have to do laundry or a versatile humanoid type robot that interacts with with the real world in a similar way that we do. I, I say humanoid just because if you want something to do the things people do, the easiest way to do it is to have it be like a person. Surely such a versatile robot would be very profitable. And while this was predicted as coming by science fiction going back over a century, this proved to be a more complicated problem to solve than cerebral tasks once thought to be more difficult. I think a lot of sci-fi predicts robots coming before sort of all of the thinking office jobs would get replaced by AI. It seems to be the opposite that's happening. It's not that writing language and image generation are easy tasks, but they were in fact easier than making these robots. I don't think it's fair to characterize these achievements as being in the wrong direction. If you're unhappy with the level of automation in the world of laundry or dishes, well, you can work on some technological breakthrough in the world if you want to. You might want to leave that to engineers. Whatever such a solution will look like will likely not be something which can easily be distributed through a web browser or app for a modest monthly subscription cost and scaled to millions of users by deploying more cloud computing. 
This would instead be a complex manufactured good with a high cost of production, steep cost to consumers, and difficulty in distributing. There's just a few reasons for which we happen to naturally be going in the wrong direction. It's harder to produce and distribute things than software these days. We can also ask if it's indeed true that we don't have time to write or make art because of laundry and dishes. Surely as a single parent, I find that I have less time to do the things I might otherwise like to because of the many chores that come with parenting. Joanna Masiajuska, the author of the hit tweet, has somehow still found the time to author 22 distinct works according to her Goodreads page. Good for you. There are still many challenges in the world of chores which exist, and again, we have machines to do some of these, but not all of them. Takes a long time to wash your car. Well, you can bring it through the car wash, it's pretty easy. That one's been solved pretty well. But you can't really easily clean the interior of your car with any sort of machine. I find cleaning my house to be a lot of work. It takes up a lot of my time because I have children and they make it very dirty. I have a Roomba, it's a robot vacuum. It helps a bit with that, but this device's use is limited to me. The difficult part is not the vacuuming, but it's tidying up enough to allow the Roomba to go around without encountering any obstacles. I can't have children in the house for more than five minutes before things are on the floor again. Not to mention that I have cats who like to knock things off the counter, unfortunately. I also don't have a machine which does mopping, but these do exist. Um, They're a bit more complicated. You need to program them to, you know, not try to mop up the carpet and things like that. But that technology does exist, although it is a bit expensive as well. Once again, there's no simple solution to the tidying up problem uh, any more than the remaining parts of laundry or dishes. And I imagine that would need to be, again, something like a humanoid multi-purpose robot, which goes around the house and put things where they need to be. Just training that robot to know where everything is meant to go would probably be a lot of work. If you don't want to end up having the robot put things away and then you can never find them again. Unless you can just ask the robot. So I used to have a cleaning uh, service that came by basically once every two weeks um, and and did some of the cleaning. But I still had to tidy up so that, you know, it isn't a total solution to all of your problems. But this is kind of the issue, though. We don't simply need machines. The ideal solution is just a human servant or simply a paid person, which would go around and do the chores for us. And some people do have that. This used to be fairly common for wealthy people, um, but at least where I live, it's 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 pretty uncommon to have frequent access to staff to do this. People don't really have like live-in servants or butlers and things like that, um, at least no one that I know has this. As I mentioned, I used to have a cleaning service which equated to about three hours of paid work every two weeks, and I found found that useful. But I might need something like that pretty much every day to keep on top of all the chores which I go through including laundry, dishes, and cleaning, as well as uh, meal prep, so school lunches, my own lunches, breakfast, uh, dinner for the kids, and childcare in general. And being able to afford to pay someone that much is probably out of reach for a lot of people. The issue is that in the modern world, goods have gotten cheaper as people has, have come out of poverty, making the cost of labor increase so that even wealthier people have less of an ability to basically hire humans to do whatever they want. So while countries with greater economic disparity have access to cheap labor, this will allow richer citizens in that country to have humans to do their chores. This becomes less accessible in places where there is more economic equality. Basically, I can't afford to pay another human to work hours a day when I'm not making orders of magnitude more than that person is. I just wouldn't be able to afford it. So for that reason, I think nannies uh, and things like that were a lot more common in the past. And in modern times, to me, that seems like a luxury that you know, I, I wouldn't even dream of being able to afford. Despite the convenience, I don't think I'd want to have a robot to take care of my kids most of the time. It might be handy as the cost of daycare is a major one, uh, both through direct cost and the burden on the province, which is reflected in the tax rate. But I would rather my children be taught or watched by humans at school or daycare than robots, if that's really an option. There are other things that we take for granted that we may not even think of as automated chores. Cleaning oneself is largely not automated. It's still work you have to put into it and people probably don't think of it as a chore, but there are chores that used to be around this. Take a shower today. You probably wouldn't have taken a shower hundreds of years ago. So you might take a bath every few days, which might involve moving buckets of water, feeding a wood stove to heat the water. Um, Of course, the towels that you use to dry off would have to be washed without the aid of a machine. You're probably filling up a bath. Your whole family is going to be using it. And if you're not um, the first one in there, water's going to be a little dirty by the time you get to it. Pumping gas in your car, it takes a few minutes. How about feeding your horse, mucking the stalls, placing its horseshoes, or having staff to just do that work? 
not quite as easy as pumping some gas. It's difficult to show just how much less time we spend doing chores than we used to. When you look at the stats, it really looks like we spend way less time doing it. And this is both the cause and the result of women entering the workforce. In the 1920s, time devoted to cooking, clearing, and household cleaning was 271 minutes per day. Try doing that after a long work day. That's a lot of minutes. So by 2000, this was down to 108 minutes. That's less than half. This includes laundry, specifically mentioned in the meme, taking half the time. There are also some things we barely do anymore. So textile care, so mending, knitting, and sewing went from 15 minutes a day in the 20s to two minutes a day in the year 2000. Surely sewing machines may help there a bit, but really it's just economic progress and the quality of goods, which means that people aren't mending or making clothes like we used to. Time spent doing childcare has actually gone up. So it was 35 minutes per day in the 20s and 88 minutes per day in the year 2000. Now this doesn't seem bad to me, as basically people do less chores and, they be able, and they're able to spend more time with their children or, you know, make art, write, whatever you want to do. And this whole thing is reflected in many other aspects of the professional world. So not long ago, virtually every person worked in agriculture, while today it's just a small fraction of people. And this is all due to industrialization, farming machinery, all sorts of things like that. None of this is AI, but it's automation nonetheless. Automation has freed us up to do other things. We have absolutely been freed up to do other things by being more efficient at many of the tasks that we used to do. Now, I'm not going to get too much into the other side of the meme. The suggestion is that AI is doing my art and writing so that I can do my laundry and dishes. Yes, AI can write and do art. I don't believe this has meant people aren't able to write or do art as much as they may have otherwise. It remains to be seen what, if any, impact advances in AI will have on art and writing as a profession. That said, automation in general, including advances in AI, are likely to continue to replace many tasks which humans don't like doing, leaving us more time to do things that we do like doing. If you, as a human, value creative work like making art and writing, it is likely that advances in AI will free your time to be able to do more of that in the future. Current advances in AI are mostly making progress on replacing human intellectual labor, including writing and art. But I'm sure we're just a few breakthroughs in robotics hardware and algorithms to control them from a massive change in how we approach physical labor as well. It remains to be seen how we as a society are able to continue to support people financially and give their lives meaning as most work becomes automated. We aren't quite there yet, but I envision a future where we are there pretty soon. Is AI pushing us in the wrong direction? That's a fairly subjective question, but to me, the premise is a bit flawed. We've made great advances in the world of laundry, dishes, and other industrial advances, which have minimized the amount of time humans spend on chores, decreased human suffering, increased productivity, allowed women to enter the workforce, and allowed families to spend more time with their children. Perhaps a century ago, most women would not have had much of a choice in whether or not they'd spend most of their days doing laundry by hand with a washboard and soap mending clothes, and doing other difficult chores. Today, while life is still filled with some dreary work, women can also find time to write novels and produce art either professionally or recreationally, and even find a bit of time between chores to write a viral tweet about how AI are taking over our artistic pursuits. We should be back to another in-person recording for the next show. And until then, peace out, Cubewoods. For show notes or to discuss this episode, visit our Facebook page and website at trcpodcast.com. For general inquiries or to send a topic or parody suggestion, email info at trcpodcast.com. Help support the show by leaving a review on iTunes and liking us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter at trc underscore podcast. Thank mm-hmm. you.